Hey girls, Sally here from Bridalicious. As well as a professional makeup artist, health coach and nutrition advisor, I'm also an exercise physiologist. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what an exercise physiologist is, basically our role is to use exercise as therapy to get people to their best health or back to their best health if they have an injury or a lifestyle disease or some sort of other condition. Some of my roles have included working with people in hospitals post-operation, in private practice with people suffering chronic conditions, at health retreats facilitating complete lifestyle overhauls, one-on-one -on -one personal training with healthy individuals, and more recently, delivering injury prevention programs in the workplace. What each of these roles have taught me is that the human body, whilst magnificent and complex, is not indestructible. Almost all of us get injures, injures, injuries and setbacks with our health. So can I be a parent and echo the words of Jim Rohn? Take care of your body, it's the only place you have to live. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to prevent injuries. As you increase the frequency and intensity of your play sessions, the risk of injury can increase. If done progressively and with correct technique and rest, play should help rather than hinder your enjoyment of life. To minimise the risk of injuries or manage existing niggles, aches and pains, here are my tips to stay injury free. Firstly, observe the principle of progressive overload. As you start to introduce play as a way of life, your body adapts to the stimulus of movement. To begin with, your wedding dress workouts were easier and of lower intensity. Over the course of the program, the intensity and the difficulty of the exercise has increased therefore applying more stress on the body and prompting the adaptations of improved fitness, strength and movement mastery as well. By gradually increasing the volume and intensity of your play, rather than going in gung-ho, this naturally reduces the risk of injury. So moral of the story, don't go too hard too soon or you'll stay, sorry, or you'll risk injury and don't stay still too long or you'll risk stagnancy and lacking of results. So next up is core strengthening. Your core are the deep muscles that are close to your spine. Your transverse abdominis, which is like your natural weightlifter's belt, your pelvic floor, your multifidus is the one at the back, and also the diaphragm that helps you breathe. The primary function of these muscles is to stabilize the torso and the spine, and also it protects them. Most movements are initiated by the core, and when you mindfully strengthen and engage your core, you not only reduce the risk of back injuries, but you also increase the effectiveness of your movement. In other words, when your core is strong, your arms and legs are stronger too. One helpful way to engage your core is to think of holding a Wii and drawing your belly button towards your spine. Pilates and yoga are fantastic for core strengthening. They really focus up on this. I personally have become an enormous fan of yoga as I feel it encourages engagement of the core during movement as well as promoting engagement of the head and the heart through the nature of movement meditation. So next is stretching. When you stretch a muscle, you actually promote blood flow to the muscle. Blood brings heat and therefore makes your muscles more elastic and less likely to injure. Another benefit of stretching is because it helps actually correct imbalances in the body during, no, from poor posture or movement patterns over time. Because our modern world is so engineered to sit, mostly hunched forward in a C-shaped spine, we can develop tight muscles, particularly on the front of the body and corresponding lengthening and therefore weakness on the back of the body. With imbalances in muscles, wear and tear can occur on the skeleton and eventually pain symptoms will present. Often stretching tight muscles and strengthening corresponding weak muscles can actually resolve pain. If you do have a persistent pain or injury in your body, visit a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist who will assess you as to whether imbalances in your muscles are contributing to the pain. They'll likely prescribe you with a stretching and strengthening program to correct your posture and your movement patterns so you can better manage or possibly resolve your pain. This week's play transformation task encourages you to not skip out on your stretch cool down session at the end of each workout. If you do have a pain, especially if it's more than a five out of 10 pain, and you've had it for maybe more than one week, don't put up with it. Get it checked out by visiting a physio or visiting your GP. Chronic pain is classified as any pain you've had for six months or more, the negative effect of which 
is not just capping your physical potential, but your emotional state. And it's so worth prioritizing, having been someone who suffered chronic pain myself. Book in with an appointment right now. Book in with an appointment. Book an appointment right now if you've been putting it off and that way you'll be free to exercise well and exercise often. Because the benefits of exercise on your overall health is huge. So to celebrate that, I'm gonna finish with a quote from Booth. So with regards to exercise, we know of no single intervention with greater promise than physical activity to reduce the risk of virtually all chronic conditions simultaneously. Thank <laughs> you.